What does Jesus value the most? What is it that brings him the most joy and glory? Now we might come up with many good answers to those questions, but I think that the most accurate answer might well be the thing that Jesus values the most, the thing that brings him the most joy and glory, is that he is the only begotten Son of the Father. And we, because of our baptism, because of what Jesus has done for us, are encouraged to value and find joy and glory in that same reality. For by grace, by God's gift, we become what Jesus is eternally by nature. We are the children of God. And that is no small thing. In fact, it is perhaps the greatest thing about us, and it is a pure gift of God the Father, obtained by God the Son and effected in us by the outpouring of God the Holy Spirit. At every Mass, just before the Lord's Prayer, we hear it put, We now dare to say, Our Father. Jesus, in teaching us to pray, invites us to address God the Father in the way he does, precisely as our Father. We are invited into Jesus' relationship with the Father. His Father is our Father. And we wouldn't dare to think nor say these things about our relationship with the Creator and Sustainer of the whole universe if it were not at the Saviour's command and formed and taught to us by his divine authority. The Catechism of the Church teaches on this point and draws out many implications. But one of them is that this truth about who God is for us and who we are for God should bring us to have immense trust and confidence in our Father, and that we should therefore pray the Lord's Prayer with a strong sense of faith and confidence. We shouldn't just babble it or rattle it off, but really invest faith and trust in the Lord and the Lord's Prayer. The Catechism then goes on to quote St. Augustine, who wrote, Our Father, at this name love is aroused in us, and the confidence of obtaining what we are about to ask. What would he not give to his children who ask, since he has already granted them the gift of being his children? To those who are worried, anxious, or afraid, those who are in great need of perhaps great things, Let me remind you that you are a son or a daughter of our Heavenly Father who loves you more than any parent could ever love their child. So today, I invite you to have great trust in God. Put your trust in Him. In the Creed, we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty. God who is my Father and who is almighty, all-powerful. He's not a distant God, hard of hearing and stubbornly holding out against us. He is our good Father, who knows how to give good things to his children. When we pray, we should do so with faith-filled hearts. We should approach our Heavenly Father Remembering what the Holy Spirit tells us in Scripture, in the first letter of St. John, think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, and that is what we are. When I pray, I may often feel like a beggar before the greatness and grandeur of God. But in truth, with Christ, And in Christ and through Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, I come before God 
my heavenly Father, as his beloved Son. And I ask him for good things, not because I have been good and think I might deserve them, but because he is good and he is my Father. He is a good Father. He is my good Father. He is our good Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.